of the House, business is interrupted for the presentation of the inaugural speech. On behalf of the new member for Balmer, I acknowledge the presence in the gallery today of family, friends and supporters of the new member. I welcome you to the Legislative Assembly today and I call the member for Balmer. respects to the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Gadigal people and the peoples of Eora country, elders past and present, and to the Bundjalung people of my homeland, elders past and present. Uh, I was going to congratulate Madam Speaker <laughs> on being selected for a second term, I still will, and, uh, and continuing as the first woman in that role. She acknowledged in her remarks on the first sitting day a number of firsts by my female colleagues in this place, and I am proud to be part of that list as the first woman to represent the seat of Ballina. On that note, allow me to make special mention of my colleague and green sister, the member for Newtown, Jenny Leong, and note that together we are the first Greens women in this House. The more closely the demographic of Parliament reflects our society, the better this place is likely to be in representing the people of New South Wales. I was honoured to be joining a, str a stronger Greens team in the New South Wales Parliament, and I acknowledge the member for Balmain, Jamie Parker, and congratulate him on his re-election. He has paved the way for many more Greens to enter the Legislative Assembly in the future. And to my new colleagues in the Upper House, Jan Barham, Jeremy Buckingham, Maureen Faruqi, John Kay and David Shubridge. I am very much looking forward to working with you in the Parliament and in my electorate. In the Greens room, party room, we have such wonderful diversity and people of passion and commitment working hard every day for the people of our state and for the protection of our amazing natural environment. I also acknowledge the dedication of the former member for Ballina, Don Page, who served our community as member for 27 years a true gentleman who conducted himself with honour and steadfast determination to improve the lives of those in our region. I would also like to do a shout out to my fellow Byron and Ballina Greens and supporters who are watching this tonight from the Ocean Shores Tavern. <laughs> Good place. Good place. <laughs> my entry into this house is a surprise to many. It is the first time the Greens have won a regional lower house seat at a general election, and it is the first time that the Greens have taken a seat, with all due respect, from the National Party. This result is a genuine testament to the health of our democracy. This place is truly a house for every woman and every man. It shows us that communities can unite, agitate and vote for change. It is a lesson to me and I hope to all of us that our job is to be responsive to our constituents and their values and priorities and to put the collective interest ahead of vested interest. If I don't live up to that ideal, I don't deserve to be back here in four years' time. I make this commitment knowing that the tens of millions of people across the globe, for them, this right, this freedom, this wonderful democracy does not exist. And so it is an even heavier burden for those of us who are privileged to hold office as the very fruit and branch of our democratic history that we stand at all times mindful of so many who have no voice and no opportunity to be heard. It is with an enormous sense of civic duty and humility that I stand in this place today before my peers and community, my family and friends, and pledge my whole heart to the role of member in this House
people tell you you're going to get emotional, but you don't. <laughs> you don't I actually didn't believe them. <laughs> um, I pledge to advocate for the betterment of not just the people and interests of my electorate and a fairer and more just society at large, but also to those things much more fundamental to our survival, to clean air and clean water, to the biodiversity of glorious forests, rivers and oceans, to the rich land we need to grow healthy food. These intergenerational treasures do not belong to us. They belong to the future and must be put beyond the reach of our mistakes and tribulations as the common wealth of all and the heritage of the future. Our laws must do this, and it is the people in this place who make those laws, and this objective spans political divides. This is a watershed moment for the Greens for the, and for the North Coast. It is a moment that suggests that people from all walks of life, in greater and greater numbers, care deeply about the environment. They understand that our resources sustain our way of life and that the essentials of life must not be sold off to the highest bidder. They remind us that there are natural laws that trump even those made in this place. As the environmentalist and civil rights activist Paul Hawken puts it, this planet came with a set of instructions, but we seem to have misplaced them. Important rules like don't poison the water, soil or air, and don't touch the thermostat have been broken. We have an economy that tells us that it is cheaper to destroy the earth in real times than it is to renew, restore and sustain it. The electorate of Ballina extends to the Gondwana rainforest of Nightcap National Park in the north and the forest and cascading streams of Federal in the west. It stretches to the most easterly point of Australia in Arakal country at Cape Byron and to the heritage town of Wardell in the south. It is quite honestly one of the most beautiful regions of the world and it is no wonder that the residents love it with a passion. We are a community of teachers, builders and nurses. Permaculture, aquaculture and organic food growers, cane and dairy farmers, artists, children and musicians. We saw in this election in the Ballina and Lismore electorates, farmers and environmentalists, people from the towns and the bush, children and grandparents united against the industrialisation of our hinterland and standing up against the threat to our food and water security from unconventional gas mining. And where they saw that this place had failed them and that our laws were failing the environment, they peacefully and defiantly stood up and said no. You will not destroy what we rely on to survive and that which belongs to all. There was a moral lesson in this, but there is also a political one. While unconventional gas may have been the catalyst, I believe the mood for change runs far deeper. At the last election, people from all walks of life started to see themselves and their hopes reflected in the social and economic policies of the Greens. They see in the Greens a deep commitment to genuine grassroots democracy where local people have a greater say in their economic future. They see in the Greens a commitment to ecologically sustainable development and they hear the Greens' message about the opportunities that renewable energy offers, creating a future away from fossil fuels. It makes no sense to them. In the dying days of the fossil fuel industry, as new, cleaner technologies proliferate and the effects of climate change are felt more acutely with each passing year, that a society backed by a responsible government would seek to unleash a new, dirty, destructive industry on our lands. An industry that would see our exquisite region dotted with gas fields, drill casings that leak methane into the atmosphere and that risk our clean, precious water when we have the radiant sun shining down on our region and are on the cusp of a renewable energy revolution. We are a lucky country and a lucky state, but we are stealing the future, selling it in the present and calling it gross domestic product. People see this and they are looking for another way, a greener way. As Richard Di Natale said last week, 
The future for us as a party is very bright. The issues of the 21st century are green issues. I'm proud of the role the Greens have played in putting these issues on the political agenda across Australia. I was at the Sydney launch of the Greens in 1991 and I'm a voter, supporter and member of the Greens because I guess I was born green. My primary drive ever since I was old enough to run away from home and join a political march has been to defend our environment and species that have no standing and to be an advocate for those in our Australian and global societies who do not have a voice and who are disempowered. I acknowledge that the Greens' success in Ballina comes out of more than two decades of Greens leaders and generations of grassroots activists, environmentalists and social justice advocates throughout the country and on the North Coast. People who have dedicated their lives to defend universal health care and quality public education, to protecting forests, waterways, threatened species, glorious communities and our rural and regional way of life. In the last decade, we've seen the voice of the Greens gaining traction federally. And Deputy Speaker, I take this opportunity to commend the work of our retiring party leader, Senator Christine Milne, for her outstanding contribution to that voice, and in particular, for her incredible work championing action on climate change. The North Coast has been, excuse the pun, a seedbed for the growth of historic figures in the Greens in the Greens. Byron Bay's Richard Staples was the first Green councillor in our region, and Broken Heads Ian Cohen, no stranger to this house, was to the other house, was the first Greens member of the New South Wales Parliament. Ian's passion for the protection of our environment is unrivalled, and Deputy Speaker, I take this moment to thank him for the support he has given me and for seeing the potential in me to do this work. Jan Barham, current Upper House member, was the first popularly elected Greens Mayor in Australia and possibly the world. It was her phenomenal work as Byron's Mayor that staved off the overdevelopment of our region and that work is continued today by our current Greens Mayor, Simon Richardson. The people in my community have stood up against mega development in the pursuit of unique village life embracing our agricultural history and riding the crest of the organic and slow food movements that have seen cottage and boutique industries from our region reach the world stage. Over a million people a year flock to our region to surf and dive, fish, walk and swim our beautiful beaches. They come to escape the hurly-burly of fast-paced lives and soak up the beauty of the hills and rivers and immerse themselves in the art and music and culture of the region. We are the jewel in the crown and we deserve to be resourced accordingly. My love of nature, I think, comes from my father, Lanny Smith, the son of a baker and Missouri farmers and who was in the gallery this evening. And my mother, Frances Norris, whose greatest solace in the world is the ocean. <coughs> My childhood was spent swimming and building cubbies in the bush behind our house in Hazelbrook in the Blue Mountains and swimming in the Brunswick River and off Bribey Island on our annual holidays to visit my mother's family and on the north coast and Brisbane. My father taught me to body surf at Harbour Beach when we moved to Manly and as a young teen I learnt to ride aboard and spent my early mornings and afternoons until dusk surfing North Stain. My friends and I formed a board riders club aptly named Wind and Sewerage as a protest against the outpouring of sewerage from North Head into our beautiful beach. And of course, the first rule passed by the club was no girl surfers allowed. <laughs> as soon as I was old enough to venture out at 15, I headed to Byron Bay to surf and play music. And it was here that I first got involved in the grassroots environmental movements to save our northeast forests, Fraser Island, stop uranium mining at Roxby Downs, and to stave off mega development in the northern rivers, the home of my maternal great great grandparents, great grandparents, and grandmother Josephine Francis Hegarty. I still surf, but today I'm an avid ocean swimmer 
and I can be found on as many mornings as possible at 8am on the deck of the Byron Bay Surf Club, setting out with as little as two or as many as 100 fellow swimmers to walk around the bay to the pass and swim back. It is always a thrill and my love for our marine park and our beaches is fierce. My strong sense of social responsibility comes from being vulnerable in my own life and a professional life in education and law. I know what it is like to have to grow up quickly and leave school to care for a sick parent and to do my HSC at TAFE because I had outgrown the cultural context of my peers. I know what it is like to raise a family on one income, to be unemployed and to uproot my family and move, move 2,000 kilometres to the outback away from home. I have been that working mum who is sitting up at night finishing her studies so that her child can have a better life. I was a teacher for 20 years in public schools in remote and regional New South Wales and the western suburbs of Brisbane and I cut my teeth as a solicitor in Redfern and the Northern Territory. Australians are strong, resilient and hardworking and ought not be divided by the Prime Minister into categories of lifters and leaners because that binary simply does not ring true for me. A caring country and state understands that any one of us may need to lean in, to take shelter when the vicissitudes of life hit hard, and that meaningful work and quality education are the things that lift us to be our best and most productive selves. I thank my campaign manager, Graham Williams, and Rihanna Blackthorne, and Justin Field for their genius and tireless work during our election campaign. I owe my election to them and the hundreds of volunteers who selflessly gave up their time to campaign for a different sort of politics for the North Coast. I thank my closest friends who are all here all the way from Western Australia, Professor Baden Offord and Christopher McFarlane and John Ryan from the North Coast who are in the gallery this evening. I thank them for their friendship and love over the decades and who continue to challenge me to think from the perspective of a thousand year old mountain. I thank my sisters Natasha and Nicole, both extraordinary women, for their encouragement and support. I thank my brother and acclaimed author Dominic Smith who is in the gallery this evening and travelled here from Austin, Texas. He is that person I seek out for the integrity and compassionate position on any issue. And my beloved daughter Tara, who was also in the gallery this evening, an unparalleled champion of the rights of creatures and small. Finally, I see my duty in this chamber, chamber as an advocate and cultivator of democracy in close collaboration with the community. I look forward to working with each of you as I work my hardest to do just that. Thank you. Congratulate the member for Bath.